Hey everybody, Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer. I am back, I am moving, my house is a complete mess, so I, I haven't really had any time to do any Touch OSC stuff over the last couple weeks. March has been bananas. Uh, but I'm back to show uh, a really short video on a great module that you can include in your Touch OSC template. So what we're going to take a look at is adding a scroll bar, so a scroll menu. Uh, and I'm going to show you one use for it, but there are a lot of different ways you can use it. Uh, but the first thing you're going to need to do is download this uh, module template that Felix made. And if you're unfamiliar with Touch OSC and the templates, you may want to take a look at some of the earlier videos that show how to set it up on your computer and on your device. Uh, but we're just going to jump into how to add this specific specific module to a template. So the first place you're gonna to wanna to go is right here to Felix's GitHub account. And under modules, you can find drop down underscore scroll, and I'll include this link in the video. Uh, but you can read more about this. And of course he has a lot of other terrific different uh, scripts and modules to add. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and grab this. So. Once you're here, you're gonna to wanna to just go ahead and download this and then open it up. So here we are back in Touch OSC. You can see I have the iPad connected, so we're all set up here. And I already have downloaded and opened the drop-down scroll. So you can see he does have some instructions here for you. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're going to control a pager with this drop-down uh, because it could be a little bit easier way to just uh, find your way through. So what we're gonna do with this scroll menu is set it up with a pager to control it via local messages. Really simple thing to do, uh, but there are a lot of different applications for this. So let's take a look. So what we're gonna do is something with local messages. So you can double click in here to open this section of this pager that he has. And we're gonna take this one, drop down by number. So let's just go ahead and copy this and just this, that's all we need to our little template here and you can paste that in. And we're gonna change this up, but first, let's add a pager. Now, a pager is a great way to keep everything organized. Um, one of the things that I like to do is have you know shortcuts, then maybe a mixer, and then maybe some FX panels. Um, so let's do that right now. Let's name this. So here in label, let's call this first one shortcuts. And then the second one, we'll call this a mixer. And the third, let's, we'll call it FX. That's fine. So let's take a look at that. Let's double click inside the pager. So right now we're in the shortcuts and let's just add some buttons. We're not gonna add functionality to this. Um, this is just for example, but let's uh, take this, copy and paste that just so we can see an example of what this would look like. Great, and now we'll double click on the side here to exit. And these are our shortcuts. Let's go into our mixer. So we click there, double click in, and then let's right click and add a couple faders. So one here, let's copy paste that. Let's make another. And you can just imagine these are uh, your mixer setup. And let's go ahead and change these to a different color. I'll pick green for now. Double click back out, and then let's click the effects panel. And double click in, and let's say we have, um, I don't know, some radials controlling, you know, I don't know, whatever your reverb is, your delay, uh, whatever it is that you're working with. And then let's copy that. And then we'll take these and let's make them, I don't know, some sort of blue. That way we can really see that we're on these different panels. All right, so back out of this, what I wanna do here, just for this example, let's move this into the corner and we're going to disable the background and disable the outline. And of course, the easy way to go around this, as you can see here on the iPad, I could just click these you know, on the iPad to uh, move around. But let's say uh, for the sake of argument, that you have a more complicated layout in your template 
and you'd prefer to use this type of drop down menu so you don't have these uh, kind of buttons hanging out up here. Of course, you will have them, but you know, sake of argument. So let's take this and we are going to uh, hide our tab colors. So right here, let's select this and bring down the alpha. Same thing on tab two and on tab three. So now you can see they're kind of hidden. Um, and if we were to select them on the iPad, you can still move around. They are still active, uh, but we are just kind of hiding them here. So let's take our drop down module here and let's select this. So you can see there's already quite a bit that's set up in here. Um, if you wanted to change the color of this, you'd have to double click into this and you can see these are all the different parts of this module. So if you wanted to change the color, you'd wanna select all of this. And let's say, uh, I'm gonna hold shift and select these different components. Let's change this to pink and then double click out. And you can see when you click this now, it's, uh, it's all, you know, this different pinkish purple color. So let's select this and you can close the control and you can close the touch because we don't need that right now in the values. And let's expand this and you can see that these are the names for each one of these drop down menus. So what we have here is shortcuts mixer FX. So let's go ahead and change those right here in local elements. Let's change that to shortcuts mixer and FX. And then we can go ahead and get rid of these because we don't need them. And then let's close it out. Great. So if you were to select these right now, nothing's happening, right? It's, uh, it's not changing anything. Um, so what we're gonna do, select this again, and this local tag that is already part of this module, you're going to take the eyedropper and then just select the pager here. And now let's try it out on the iPad. So uh, if I was to drop down here and pull up FX, you can see those are up. Uh, mixer, and now that's up. And shortcuts, super simple. This is such an easy way to get around uh, and a very organized way in case you wanted to do that. Um, but let's do one more step. Let's add in an additional tab on our pager. So we notice it's calling it by the toe here. Let's fix that. We select this and then let's double click in and see how right here, if we select this part of the group, it's called main label. Let's change default to shortcuts or menu, something like that. Let's call it menu. All right, so we put that in and then double click out of this. And now if we select down, we can see that it's under menu and it shows it right here. So let's uh, select this and add a fourth panel and see what we can do. So let's add this panel and we'll call it Tim. Awesome. And then as we look down, nothing's showing. So we have to update it by moving that scroll. And let's select here and then let's add in Tim. So right after FX, we're gonna do comma and then in quotes, Tim, make sure you close that quotes. And when you select out of here, you can scroll down and select Tim and there is nothing in Tim, right? So when we open this up, uh, there's nothing here. To help us see that, let's double click in and add a text box. And here in text, I'm just gonna say Tim. That way we can identify where we are. So if we take this drop down menu, move our scroll bar to update it, shortcuts, there we are. We have our functioning little shortcuts, our mixer, our effects, and then scroll down, and now we're on Tim. So that's a really simple way to get around of your template. If you don't wanna use those buttons on the top, you can use that drop down menu on the side. Um, it is pretty useful. You could also use it for different things. Let's say you want to, uh, instead of setting up your you know, uh, grid of 
whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note. Um, you could use a radio for that, or you could use this drop down to control a radio and set it up that way. Um, you could also use it to, let's say, choose through a different uh, selection of buttons. Um, so different labels, different buttons you want to send. Maybe in the drop down, uh, you send a different signal. So you want to turn on an instrument, um, you turn off an instrument. So here on this Blake canvas, let's add a fader real quick. And then let's paste in our uh, menu. And let's say that you wanted this to be something, let's say it was solo or mute, or maybe you wanted to arm it. Um, and then let's just use those for examples right now. Um, instead of having three buttons there to save space, you could have this little drop down menu. And then you have those, but that's three items there. Let's say you only want to show two for the scroll select this and unfold size, let's go down to two and look at that. Now when you select this, you can see you could scroll down and it's only showing two items at a time. So obviously this is a simple example of what you could do with a scroll menu uh, in controlling a pager or I love the idea of uh, kind of tightening up your faders so you could select solo or mute. Let me know how you're using the module in the comments below. I think there's a lot of different applications for something like this. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you learned something. This is the last video from this studio apartment and I'll be uh, getting back to packing now and I'll see you after I move. So be sure to like this video if you learned something. Subscribe to the channel to check out some of the next things that we take a look at in Touch OSC, including some cool new templates with some additional DAWs and uh, different software. So stay tuned for that. Uh, you can also ask your questions on the Discord channel or the Facebook group. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.